Hi, this is Attorney Mike Gravon coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today we're going to take another look at the Sovereign Citizen Court Fails. And this one is going to be Sovereign Citizen Court Fail number 10. I think I'm going to do one more on this case and, and uh, then give it a wrap up. But uh, we finally have some stuff actually happening here. Let's do it. The last time Melvillain Mayor Casey Young was in court, he told me that a removal, a notice of removal was being filed. Yeah, and I, 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 I have I, never I, seen that, so I, I'm not aware of the fact that it's been I'll make, I'll, Before today is out, I'll make sure that your, your office can you receive it hand in hand. If not, you'll be receiving it in the morning. Well, here we go with their pointless notice uh, of removal to federal court, which they can't seem to get to the judge. <laughs> Oh, that's rich. I, I'm confident it's not it's not the judge, uh, but it's them. And uh, their notice of removal has absolutely zero chance of going anywhere. And uh, they, they, they can't even figure out how to serve it on a judge who they're standing before. Uh, this was filed all the way back in January. So I don't understand what the, what the confusion is. Uh, by the way, I'm from, I don't work here. So I don't know. I don't have any confusion. I don't have any as, as well okay. as regards to the game file. I did want to ask you a question, um, Noble Cheyenne Mutata Kushinirel. The last time that you were in my courtroom, I gave you a court date in March, and I'll make sure I have the correct date here. March 23rd. Um, I'm not aware of March 23rd, but I do uh, recall last time I was here, I did uh, uh, make you aware that I. Uh, could not, would not be. Uh... <laughs> Dude, she told you about the next court date last time uh, you were there. Uh, stop acting like you have a choice about it. You don't. Uh, your little recitation of green eggs and ham, uh, if you're too young for that reference, I I don't know what to tell you. Google it. Uh, is, is not going to make any difference. You got to be in court. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe or the dogs get it. You're appearing here any longer and you told me that we that was fine and that was do what I wanted to do. So I'm just I'm just quoting what you said with David. So the March twenty third date, like you said, you, you don't give out notices and notifications through the mail. And uh, I, I had no agreement to or notification for the March twenty third day. That's why I'm not aware of it. You were in court and I told you about the March twenty third. Yes, and I told and you when that. you weren't here on March twenty third, um Ms. Gannon, who was representing you at that time, was present. And okay. your the day. Yep, Goofy, that uh, public defender that got appointed standby counsel that you didn't want, uh, she kept a, a bench warrant from issuing on you that day. And that's why you got a letter from her. And I just wanted to make that clear because I don't send letters in the mail. I tell people when they are in court. Well, that does clear up that issue. All right. The issue before the court today is... Um, to address the issue of in personam jurisdiction, which has been raised by Noble Amir KCL and Noble Shrayan Mutata pushing her out on a variety of occasions. And um, as I have made clear, I am going to treat the documents that have been filed. I have here what was filed on January 7th with my chambers, the non avoidable affidavit of fact to dismiss with prejudice for lack of personam jurisdiction. And that's the issue that I am going to discuss this morning. I know that I have received from Mr. Luciano um, a copy of his brief in opposition to that. I don't mean to be too hyper-technical, but what the, the she is doing is um, uh, sort of sua sponte, uh, amending their pleadings uh, and, and, and fixing them for them. Um, calling an affidavit a motion, because that's the proper way to get this before the court. We are finally going to address jurisdiction. And I'd like to ask Noble Cheyenne Mutata Kushinir L, do you have anything further that you want to say in support of your application? Uh, this court has no jurisdiction no matter what's filed. And uh, I'm just simply here to give all the notification. I just say you don't take all the notification concerning uh, files that uh, suits that were filed. But that's my simple, simply my. Uh, Case in point being is to you notify know, Luciano uh, in the court that they're being uh, sued. 
So, uh, You're suing Mr. Luciano in the court as well? No, I'm, I'm suing his Title 14 uh, added in practice lawsuit has been commenced against the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office Superior Court of New Jersey, oh, okay. and so on and so forth. Okay. Well, as I explained to Noble in your case, yeah, at some point in time, I can certainly take judicial notice of pleadings that have been filed in federal court or in superior court or whatever it is, but until I see it and can make reference to the docket number, I don't take judicial notice of it. I'm sure that you've had the opportunity uh, to look at the court rules and see what the court rules say about, um, and the rules of evidence say about judicial notice. So. <laughs> I get that she's being polite, but I'm quite confident he did not read the rules on judicial notice, nor would he understand them if he did. <laughs> oh, the, the whole thing is, is good. When the appropriate document is here, you know, appropriately stamped, I can certainly do that. But anything else that you want to say on the issue? Uh, this court has no jurisdiction, and uh, it's, it's too late uh, in the procedure things to prove jurisdiction because I haven't consensually like, given jurisdiction at any, uh, at any point. All right, now let me get this straight. You think that this court doesn't have jurisdiction? All right, thank you very much. Nobleman New York KCL, do you wish to say anything further in support of your application to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction? Uh, similar, similar case. Uh, you know, the uh, prosecution has failed to prove jurisdiction uh, in over five hearings. Um, I've also haven't received any notification of any oppositions to any applications to the mayor from jurisdiction. Jurisdiction has not been proven in either of the hearings that we've been here presently. The uh, last two hearings, we scheduled a date uh, for uh, jurisdiction to be a subject, and uh, the prosecution stated that uh, he wished to remain silent. Uh, therefore, uh, jurisdiction has been proven, and, it cannot be proven. and this case can no longer proceed. Further, without any violation of the law. Anything else that either of you wish to say? <laughs> oh, that is a fantastically, deliciously awful uh, argument uh, on behalf of their uh, motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. First of all, he 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 verbally states that the jurisdiction has been been proven. <laughs> Then his co-defendant steps in with with more bad argument, which is not allowed, but is but is hilarious and and is again the least of the problems around here. So the judge has let a lot more than that go. She's 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 going to let this slide too, of course. Uh, but uh, but that was uh, just an epic failure in terms of a, of an argument for their motion. No, not at this particular point. Depends on what she's saying next. Well. I'm going to listen to what Mr. Luciano has to say, and then because you are the moving parties, you will have an opportunity to respond to what Mr. Luciano has to say, and then I will speak. So they're the only opportunity you're going to have to speak. Um, you'll have a chance, as I said, you can listen to what Mr. Luciano says, and you can respond to that, of course. Mr. Luciano. So just briefly, as we in our brief, uh, under NJSA 2C 1-3A1, states clearly vested with the power to prosecute crimes occurring within its territorial borders. Since the judge's essential basis for enjoying jurisdiction in criminal cases that the crime be committed in the state in which the case is to be tried, since we put these defendants, judge, the conduct uh, that the defendants engaged in occurred in Mount Willow Township and Willowbrook Township, respectively, as a simple judge, that brief applies to all the cases involved, because there are two cases that are involved. Um, uh, the, the defendant to, to form right Noble in your case, yeah. And only one case to, to the defendant in my immediate right. Um, according to the judge, state's territorial jurisdiction, prosecute these men. And the second judge, it's an elementary offense that in fact the dispute must be decided by a petty jury. I said the state versus the note from Schumann. Um, it is submitted to the jury judge when, unlike here, there is a factual dispute over the location of the crime. Filed by both of the defense, Judge Franklin. Unintelligible is, is, a, is a good way to put it. I think that's a kind way to put it. <laughs> oh, I like this prosecutor. Unintelligible is a kind way to put it. And and he do, and he says it so nicely. He, he, the, all of the proceedings are so beneath his um, level of skill that, I mean, he, he's not worked up. <laughs> He's not in doubt as to the outcome. Uh, 
but he does have to say something. He, he has to create a record and say that, that he cited some cases, made some arguments, which he's doing, and he's doing a, a very good job of. It, it has to do with federal UCC laws and commerce, which have no application to just under the state criminal law. Um, finally, just the moving party has a burden to show no inference to reasonably draw in place inside a crime within the state. None of the final dispute judges that these crimes didn't occur inside the townships, uh, as noted in both these indictments. From the judge's defense, have not presented any credible evidence indicating any personal immunity from prosecution by the state. But the judge, the judge, the state would ask that you um, object to this. Excuse me, Mr. Scott. Well, this is basic common sense, but if you want to hear it from uh, someone who's been trying cases for over 20 years, you can't object to somebody else's arguments. This is on a motion. The only context I can think of where you can object during somebody's argument is uh, if you have a jury in the box and you think that opposing counsel is bringing up something that was limited. So prior to the trial, you have something called motions in limine. So if you're making an improper argument, either just as a matter of law or something that was specific, specifically limited prior to trial, then you could object during argument. In a motion where you have the judge hearing it, there is no basis whatsoever to object. You get a chance to, to give a rebuttal argument, which is what she says to them. Um, and then you can say whatever you want about what they said at that time. But uh, yes, this is just as stupid as you suspect. Noble Lanier, Casey Allen, Noble Cheyenne, we've got to push you around. Please, do not interrupt Mr. Luciano when he's speaking. You will have, as I said before, the opportunity to respond to anything that he says, object to it, place your position on the record. I will not allow Mr. Luciano to interrupt either of you. I will not allow either of you to interrupt Mr. Luciano. Just, just simply state what I ask that you deny the defendant's motion to dismiss the indictment uh, for lack of jurisdiction, which is what he says, the judge, you titled this. Um, though, again, the documents were not received specifically in order. I know you would consider all the documents received as a notice of motion to dismiss uh, for lack of jurisdiction. So, again, just state what goes for the reasons cited here and also comfortably. Noble, Cheyenne, would talk, push him your L. Do you wish to respond in any way to what Mr. Luciano has said? Yes, after the uh, man Casey, I'll respond. Yes, All right, uh, that would be fine. I wish to object. Um, delegation of authority orders have been submitted to the prosecutor's office, the criminal case division. Um, we are not citizens of the state of New Jersey. Uh, our dissolutions have been filed way before any of these incidents. Were occurred, uh, which were pursuant to the expatriation laws of the United States codes uh, properly. Uh, jurisdiction has been raised. The prosecution and anybody else in this court that plays an adverse party lacks the status and the nationality to proceed. Um, for the record, with the prosecution status, name, and nationality. Stop, please. Okay. Thank you. We don't have any nationality for the record. Also, just one more, please. Noble in your case, the is that all that you wish to say? Yes. All right, thank you. Noble Cheyenne, we talk to Do you wish to say anything? Yes. Uh, the point that Mr. Luciano uh, raises in regards to none of the documentation being provided uh, to the courts and to the prosecutor's office, not saying that uh, the actions did not occur in the township, it says quite explicitly in the documentation where the actual event occurred and it occurred at the uh, earth coordinates and it, we did not say that it happened in the township of uh, my world because the township of my world is a corporation so it's impossible for a corporation according to the united states code uh, to have territorial borders uh, i'm not responsible for uh, the documentation being unintelligible i'm only a level of education or what you've actually studied oh that's rich I don't know your level of education or what you studied. Well, I do, and I don't know him. He's, he's got at least a Juris Doctorate, and he studied law. <laughs> this, that's what he opens with. Then he moves on to, uh, this, this crime did not occur in these, these townships because they don't exist because we're actually not in New Jersey, we're in Timbuktu. I'm not making this up. That's his argument. Well, in the documentation itself, and that is uh, by far not the first no, uh, notice to dismiss that was presented to this court. Uh, so I dispute that, uh, and that is not, uh, actually not true, uh, that jurisdiction was disputed in, in case the point by the territory. 
Well, there you have it. We finally got to something. The the court took their uh, crazy affidavit, called it a motion, which I don't I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, the, all they're saying is no jurisdiction, no jurisdiction, no jurisdiction. It's a bad argument, but you, she was hoping that they would file a proper motion so she could deny the thing. Since they didn't file a proper motion, she imputed one for them out of the mess that they handed her so that she could have a hearing, listen to what they say, which is, that's good practice, that's due process. That, you know, that she, she could have taken another tact and just said, you haven't brought a proper motion, I'm not listening to it at the end, next. That's it. Um, that would have left to open a, an avenue of appeal to say, oh, well, you know, we were close enough and we, were, we weren't represented. I don't think that gets you anywhere because she tried to appoint people for them and that they wouldn't listen to. But, yeah, I, I, I get it. Those are judgment calls and I, I won't second guess them. But uh, at, at the end of the day, we finally had our argument on jurisdiction. Uh, she doesn't give a ruling in this particular one, but uh, she, she's made the record, and her ruling is a foregone conclusion. They have jurisdiction, so I mean, I, I know what that is. I don't, you know, um, I think I've got one more of these, and I'm going to give my final wrap up, do a little research, so that I can, I can uh, finally be down with the Marrakesh Law Society. But I've had I've had fun with the Fez. Well, we'll take you out here with the Frankie belly scratch. I just wanted you to know that he gets them too. I have another clip with Ali getting a belly scratch, but uh, they both get plenty of them. Thanks for watching. If you like that, hit like and subscribe.